ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Are you kidding me? I said, Merry Christmas. We're going to have to do better than that. Maxine, have you been a good girl this year? Yes, I guess too. Well, Merry Christmas. Have a candy cane on Santa. Well, Merry Christmas. Carol Klein, I'm just going to walk on by. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, how are we all doing today? Haven't formally introduced myself. I am Santa P. Claus. And I am out searching for the perfect gift. That's what we do this time of year, isn't it? In fact, how many yesterday were out shopping just by a show of hands? Okay, some of us. They tell us that there were more shoppers yesterday than Black Friday. And we were out shopping last night, and I believe it. There were cars everywhere, people everywhere. People were driving out of control, waving with not all five fingers. <laughs> but don't worry, I was making a list. And I've checked it twice. And so as we were driving around yesterday, trying to find the perfect gift, I was blown away about, again, what we are turning Christmas into. Now, now, don't get me wrong. I love Christmas. I mean, here I am standing in front of all of you in my favorite suit. Now, some of you, since I've been here, are giving me a hard time for not wearing a suit. You're welcome. But what's interesting is we drive around, we fly around. In fact, the reason why I'm here today is because as I was flying over, apparently there's this young hunter by the name of Mike Russell who was out bow hunting this morning, and he winged one of my reindeer. And so here I am this morning with all of you, going to talk to you about the perfect gift. Because that's what we want, isn't it? This time of year, this week, we're going to celebrate Christmas and we're going to have our family together and we're going to eat way too much food and we're going to gather around a tree with lots of presents and hand them out and we're going to hope that this year we bought, purchased the perfect present. Now, Christmas has changed drastically over the last several hundred years, I would know. I can remember one time when people would write me letters and ask for Christmas gifts. At one time, people would write me letters and they would ask for things like peace on earth. That sounds nice, doesn't it? I mean, you think about all the crazy things going on in the world today. And even if you watch news in the last few weeks, especially the last few days, probably especially yesterday, with all the craziness going on in the world today, wouldn't it be nice if sometimes we'd put on our wish list just a little bit of peace on earth? And then as the years went by, the gifts started getting pretty elaborate. Not too many years ago, people used to write me letters and they would ask for things like an apple or an orange. Now those were easy to come by. And it seems as the years have progressed, the gifts have gotten more elaborate and more complicated. And i got to tell you, I have been very, very busy with all the Christmas shopping that I've been doing for all of you. Because that's what we do at Christmas. That's what Christmas is about. In fact, many of your children have written me letters in this last year, and, and I'd like to read some of those letters to you that, that have been written to Santa. No. I found these letters online, and we know this, that everything you read online is true, and these are letters from real kids to the real Santa, which is me. Here we go. Dear Santa, 
I would like some Taylor Swift tickets. Those are easier to come by nowadays. And I would like clothes from Nordstrom. And I would like a boyfriend. (laughs) That's from Sarah. Dear Santa, I've been a very good girl this year. Even though I'm Jewish, I still believe in you. All I want for Hanukkah is love. I also want to get rid of a girl Ariel hates. From Ariel. Dear Santa, I've been very good this year. You should recognize my name on the top of your nice list. I would like a unicorn, a trip to New York, a date with Iron Man, and a stitch teddy bear. Even just one of the above would be lovely. Thanks, Santa. To Santa, I want an iPad touch, an airsoft gun, a knife, night vision goggles. (laughs) Absolutely no clothes. Parents, watch your kids this year. Dear Santa, if you get this note, please write back. I have some questions. Does my dog bark when you come? And does Rudolph really exist? Well, as of this morning, he did. And am I on the naughty or nice list? And please get me a drum set, the spy car, the spider, and the la-la loopsie? Anyway, what I really want is a bell from your sleigh. Here's where to leave it. Under the tiny tree, in a tiny white box, wrapped in a red bow. And I guarantee me and my sister will be asleep. Please write back. P.S. My sister has been very, very mean to me this year. (laughs) As always. Now this is from somebody right here in our church, in our community. And I love this one. It says, what I want most for Christmas this year is for everyone to have a good Christmas. It's important for everyone to have a good Christmas, poor or rich. I'd like a letter back on the plate when you see my note card I gave you on the table, and I promise to leave you cookies and milk. That's nice, isn't it? It's what we want. It's what these kids want. I mean, they are desiring the perfect gift. Now, I'm going to let some of you down this morning. This is going to crush some of you this morning. Some of you are not going to be able to handle this news. I'm not the real Santa. Disappointing, I know. But i got to tell you, in my family, one of the things that we try to pursue is the perfect gift. i got to tell you, it's really hot up here. (laughs) Santa is sweating like a madman right now. <laughs> but my family, we're in search of the perfect gift. That's what we do. We, we go out and shop and we, we ask the kids questions and we talk to them about it and, and they tell us the long list that they have and we try to put it together and our hopes is that we can go to the stores and we can fight the traffic and fight the crowds and we can find the perfect gift. And, and our desire is that when we gather around the Christmas tree and and we read the Christmas story, and then we let our kids dive into the gift, or our desires that when they rip open those presents, they will say, we love mom and dad, they are the greatest. Because then we'll know that we got them the perfect gift. We work hard at it, and we spend way too much money on it. And, and I can remember last year. Last year, our kids are, are growing like weeds, and, and it's just crazy how fast kids grow, isn't it? And, and I can remember when you know, we could wrap up anything for our kids and they would be happy as all get out. You know, they didn't know that we got it that for them last year. <laughs> but you could wrap something up and give it to them and it was like the best gift in the world. And, and as our kids get older, it gets more complicated, doesn't it? And last year, my kids, we, we just couldn't get the G.I. Joes anymore. We couldn't just get the Barbies anymore. We, we had to step it up a level because my kids asked for something. They wanted a PlayStation. Not a PlayStation 1, not a PlayStation 2, but a PlayStation 3. You guys are quick this morning. 
PlayStation 3. And so we searched high and low, and I figured, you know, it's a popular gift item, and I just figured they'd be everywhere. And I can remember walking into the first store and walking up to the counter and said, I'd like a PlayStation 3. And the gal behind the counter kind of smirked, and she said, well, we don't have that here. She said, we sold out of that a long time ago. I said, do you know who I am? She said, I don't care. (laughs) So I went to the next store, and I went to the electronic counter, and I went up to the store, and I said, hey, listen, we're looking for a PlayStation 3, and and we really need one of those. My kids, their whole Christmas is depending on it, and we need a PlayStation 3. And she said, well, we sold out of those a long time ago. And I said, well, what am I going to do? And she said, well, your best bet is just to call around and see if there's any stores anywhere that have them. And so we did. We got on the phone and we started calling places. And and I found a place about 20 minutes away, half hour away, somewhere on there. And I called them and I said, hey, listen, I need a PlayStation 3. And they said, we got one left. And I said, great, hold it for me. And they said, we can't. I said, I will be there. And I hopped in the vehicle and and I drove quickly obeying all the traffic rules that I could, drove quickly to the store, and I walked in, and I ran through the store, and I came back to electronics, and I said, hey, I'm the one that called, you know, about 10 minutes ago, and (laughs) some of you are on top of it. Way to go, man. And I said, I'm here to pick up the PlayStation 3. She goes, you won't believe it. Somebody just bought it. You know, what am I going to do? I mean, how are my kids going to get the perfect gift if I don't get this? And so I called some more places, and finally we found one, and, and I flew to that place, and, and I got it, and I was so excited, and I took the box of this PlayStation 3, and it was like the angels were singing in the background, and, you know, peace on earth was going to come to the Kramer household, and we brought it home, and we wrapped it up, and we placed it under the tree, and I'll never forget, we, we signed it to, to all three of the kids. Never forget that Christmas morning last year, they dove into it, and they saw that it was a PlayStation 3, and mom and dad were the best and the greatest. We got them the perfect gift. This last year, this is no exaggeration, I bet you my kids have played it at most five times in this last year and they don't care about it they don't want it so I bring that all up to say this does anybody want to buy a PlayStation 3 (laughs) that's what we do isn't it I mean we work hard at that we stress over it we have anxiety over that So that we can find the best perfect gift for our kids, and if we get it for them, they will be happy. But listen to what Scripture says, and I want us to go from this passage of Scripture today as we talk about the perfect gift. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, it says this. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like the shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be the kind of first fruits of all he created. What he's saying is that, listen, you know, I don't change. I mean, you think about the gifts that have changed over the years. You think about the things that our kids wanted last year and what they want this year and how different it's become. This passage of Scripture is saying, God's saying, listen, I don't change And if you want to know something, every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so I want us this morning to talk about that. You see, the gifts that you buy this year, they tell us that the average Christmas shopper will spend around $786 on gifts this year. Now, that's the average shopper. You know what that means? That means that some of you will spend way above that. And some of you will spend way below that. But the average of us all put together, the average is about $786 that we will spend on Christmas this year. $403.26 will be spent on our kids. Spoiled little buggers, aren't they? 
$68.23 on our friends. $21.06 will be spent on our co-workers. Now, I know when you add those up, they don't come up to $786, but the reason is because they didn't include uh, Christmas cards that people send out, Christmas goodies that people buy for others, and they broke it down into all that. How many here by a show of hands say, you know what, I don't like shopping out in the shopping malls. We shop online. How many here are online shoppers? Yeah, all over this place. You're feeling really good about yourselves right now, aren't you? I noticed you shot your hands up. I am an online shopper. Listen to what stats tell us about you online shoppers. You spend 22% more than the rest of us. Isn't that crazy? Save time, but you don't save money. (laughs) 22% more than the rest of us. They tell us that 59.9% of you Plan on buying something for yourself this year. Now, some of you aren't going to be as quick to throw up your hand, but I know you're out there. How many by a show of hands either plan or have already bought themselves something for Christmas this year? Yeah, a few of us brave souls. I bought me a bear stocking cap this week. Merry Christmas to me. 59.9% of us plan on buying something for ourselves this year. And so I don't want to ask the question this morning, do you hear what I hear? I want to twist it a little bit and ask the question, do you smell what I smell? Are we messing up a day that maybe God intended to be holy and special? Are we starting to see things in our day and age that we're passing on to our children that maybe break the heart of God? Now listen, I want to stress this to everybody. I am standing before you this morning dressed up as Santa Claus. Okay? I like Santa Claus. I buy my kids Christmas gifts, and and we go all out with all of that. And so I'm not pointing any fingers at anybody without evaluating my own life on this issue. But I wonder, are we going down a path Listen to what Scripture says. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. See, what happens at Christmas is we end up buying things that won't last. We put in all this time and energy and lots of money into something that someday will all be gone. We want our kids to be happy during the Christmas season, and trust me, I I feel the weight of this. We want our kids to be happy this Christmas season. In order for them to be happy, we have to give them the perfect gift. Well, maybe... Just maybe some of us in this place, including myself, are missing it a little bit when it comes to the perfect gift that we need to pass on. I want us to talk a little bit this morning about what that perfect gift looks like. You see, I believe this, the perfect gift will last in eternity. The gifts that we purchase will not. There's a story in the book of John that we talk about often in this Church, it's the story of the woman at the well. It's one of my favorite stories of redemption and love that we see from Jesus. In that story, we we have a scenario where Jesus is on a journey and he comes across this well and there's a woman there and the woman is a Samaritan and Jesus, of course, is a Jew and and they come into the situation where where the Jews and the Samaritans, naturally, they didn't like each other. They, They held these grudges against each other. They said all sorts of awful things against each other and and for a Jewish person to even be in the setting in a, in a circle with the Samaritan, it would make them dirty in their mind, and they would have to go through all these ceremonial washings. And Jesus sits down next to this lady, and, and he says, man, would you give me something to drink from this well? And it blows her away. 
She says, how can you, a, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, for water? And, and in parentheses, it just says behind that, because they did not associate with each other. That was a nice way of putting it. And listen to what Jesus says, and I want it to resonate in our lives this morning. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks for a drink, you'd have asked him, and he would have given you living water. If I could say to all of you this Christmas, if we only knew the gift of God, if we only understood it, if we only could grasp it, if we could only get our mind and our hearts around this incredible gift that God has offered us. Here's the makings of a perfect gift. John 3, 16 through 17. Jesus says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, to save the world through him. So there's three things that I believe from this passage that we can say this is the perfect gift. This is the making of a perfect gift. The first thing that I want to tell all of you this morning is that God loves you. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But I want you to grasp that this morning. It's a gift from God this morning that that the eternal God who created you and the heavens and everything in it and this God who's got all these things on his plate and this God who you'd think man he's got this busy life this morning God loves you today regardless of what you've done regardless of your past regardless of how much you've messed up regardless of the mess that you're in this morning we have a God who loves you today You see, I think sometimes the church, unfortunately, paints this picture, and and this has been something that (laughs) I've been accused of my whole ministry. People say, oh, you always talk about God's love, God's love, God's love, and you know what? For the rest of my life, I'm going to talk about God's love because God's love has changed me. When I came to the conclusion that God wasn't out to wipe me clean off this earth, when I finally discovered through Scripture and diving into a relationship with Him, when I finally discovered that God wasn't up there to smite me for every mistake I made, there's a day where I realized that there's a God out there who's absolutely crazy about me. The good, the bad, the ugly of Mike Kramer, God absolutely loves me. And so I want to stress to all of you, I I know where some of you have come from, I don't know where some of you have come from. I know some of the mess that some of you have been in. I don't know some of the mess that some of you have been in. But I can say this for certainty. God loves you this morning. It's an incredible gift. A gift that many times we feel like we don't deserve. We have a God who loves us today. But not only does God love us this morning, God gave His Son. He sent His Son more than 2,000 years ago. He came as a baby. It's interesting, this time of year, department stores and companies are making literally billions of dollars in these last few weeks because of Christmas. And these companies and department stores that are making billions of dollars, they, they have the audacity to tell us at times that we can't say things like, Merry Christmas, or we can't mention the name of Jesus in these places that are making them all sorts of money. But I want to tell you that we get all shook up about this day and we get all excited about this day because more than 2,000 years ago, this incredible gift was given to us that God, because of His love for us, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into this world. He came as a baby. Shepherds came and wise men came. This incredible gift that God gave us, He grew up into a a young man, and and he went out and he showed us what it looks like to serve people. He showed us what it means to really love people. He gave us a, a little glimpse of the heart of God by how he lived and interacted with people, even the worst of the worst. So one of the most incredible gifts that we have been given this morning is that God came to us. As we know in Scripture that 
when he was a young man, he was put on a cross. He was beat and he was nailed. and He did that because he loves us. And the God of the universe took on my sin and your sin. And this incredible gift that he has given us, he came and he gave his life for us. Get this. The mess that you're in, Jesus came for that. (laughs) The mess that you've just created and there's a whole trail behind you of mistakes and mess-ups and hurts and regrets, Jesus came for that. And he came to take that on himself so that we don't have to live with that anymore. And he went to the cross so that your sin and my sin could be forgiven. And the third thing when it comes to the making of the perfect gift is this God who loves us and gave his life for us. He's given us eternal life. That in relationship with him, we not only get to go to heaven someday, but right here on this earth, we get the life that we are always intended to have. And Jesus described it as eternal life. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8, it says this, You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. But for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. It's incredible, isn't it? That's why we celebrate Christmas. And so the challenge I have for all of us, and maybe for some of us we need to respond to this this morning, the gift has already been given. The gift has already been given. You just need to receive it. (laughs) And something? God loves us. He gave His Son for us. And and we have this opportunity to have eternal life. And and it's been all packaged together. And all we have to do this morning is say, yes, I want that. I receive it this morning. Wouldn't it be something this Christmas? If you thought you got your child the perfect gift... I mean, even in your mind, picture in your mind what that gift is. If you just have in your mind, you got your child that perfect gift, and and you spent hours, you know, thinking about it and hashing it over, and you fought crowds and traffic, and you finally got that perfect gift. And you brought it home, and you put it in a nice box, and, and you wrapped it all up. Pretty wrapping paper. Of course, you got to put a bow on top of it. I know some of you, you take those name tags and you slap them on there. I just use duct tape. And you put it under the Christmas tree. And Christmas morning, the kid's all fired up about that morning. And as you gather them around the tree, and, and we know this, you read the Christmas story because that's what we do now, right? We read the Christmas story to our kids. And and our kids are ready to dive into the gift. And you just can't wait to see them open up because you know you got them the perfect gift. <laughs> and you say, all right, kids, dive in. And your kids just kind of scoot back and say, ah, not this year. Not this year. But they don't receive it. That would crush us, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, you think we got them the perfect gift and they don't even want it. I wonder sometimes if, if during this Christmas season we have a heavenly father that's looking down on us because he loves us and he cares about us. And he says, listen, I've, I've wrapped this gift for you. It's all been done. I love you guys. I gave my son for you guys. He went to the cross for your sin. And he did all that for you and to give you eternal life. And, and many of us, and I know many of us probably in this place just say, ah, Not this year. Not this year. We miss out on the perfect gift. My challenge for all of us this Christmas season, it's not rocket science. Sometimes the church has made this more complicated than what it really is. You don't have to jump through hoops. You don't have to say the certain words. You don't have to become a member of this place. 
listen, you don't even have to give us any money to receive this incredible gift. It's all been wrapped, placed in front of us. Scripture says all we have to do is receive it with faith. I'd like everybody to bow their heads, close their eyes, and just do this for me. Nobody looking around. Nobody looking around. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to make you come up front. I'm not going to embarrass you. But maybe, just maybe, there's some people out here this morning that even as I shared about this perfect gift, just something began to stir inside of you. Maybe you'll say, you know what? I know about this gift. I believe this. It doesn't all make sense to me. But this morning, I'd like to receive this gift. And I'd like to invite Jesus into my life and begin this day following Jesus. If you're out there today, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to tell you to clean up your act. I'm not going to tell you anything about that. I'm just going to ask, would you be bold enough just to quickly slip up your hand and say, today I want to receive that gift. Just quickly do that. Place your hand up and down. Yeah, all over this place. All over this place. I want to pray for you, and then we're going to take communion together. And again, celebrate this incredible gift that God has been that God has given us. My challenge for us this morning is let's remember this Christmas really what that perfect gift is about. And those of you who raised your hand this morning as I'm praying, I just want you to say to Jesus, Jesus, I received this gift. I believe that you died for my sin. And from this day on, I'm going to commit to living for you. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for this time of year. and We have fun with this time of year. You know me, I get pretty excited about all this. Santa and the gifts. and Although I hate shopping, I love seeing my kids' response on Christmas morning. Jesus, I sometimes wonder if our hearts are in the wrong direction with all of this. And, and again, I'm looking at myself this morning, not anybody else. This year, I want to pass on to my kids and remind them of really what the perfect gift is. I thank you that you love us despite our mess. I thank you that you love us despite things that we've done. God, I also acknowledge this. You gave your son for us, and I'm grateful for that. Your son came as a baby one day, and changed the whole course of our history. You gave us hope. And God, I look forward to not only the life you're giving me right now, but eternal life. The life to come. So I pray for those right now that raise their hands. You know everything about them. You know the situation they're going through. I pray that right now they'll just be overwhelmed with you. That you would just put your arms around them, tell them how much you love them and are proud of them. And God, I pray that the commitment that they make today will last, that they will, they will commit to you, that they are from this day on going to serve you and live out this incredible gift. We love you, Jesus.